rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Sjogren's syndrome. The list goes on and on and on. We can quell the fire in the body by changing nutrition, adding some fish oil, doing some things, natural herbs, things of that nature to bring down the inflammatory rate. So people come in with arthritis and sometimes they walk out without it. But they have to do the work. We can educate, but people need to do their own work, which means eating judiciously. That means when you reach for something and you have to eat it and you know it's not good for you and put it in your mouth, spit it out. Or don't do it. But if it gets in your mouth, spit it out. It's okay. All of these grains, wheat, barley, rye, contain gluten. People have heard of this sitting in this room, I'm sure, right? You guys are pretty educated. Very high to digest, hard to digest. Now oats, you know, people love to have oatmeal, right? It's healthy for the heart, isn't it? No. Groats? Groats? Okay. Not healthy for the heart. Why? Grains are very high glycemic. They digest very easily. They raise the sugar up like that. Beside for the fact that they're inflammatory because of the gluten in them, which causes problems on its own. So we take away all those good morning things. Everyone who comes in my office is on the perfect diet, they tell me. They have a yogurt shake in the morning with fruit, oatmeal. Where do you think their sugar is in about 10 minutes? They'd be better off eating a bowl of sugar. Be careful of oats and some of the other grains that supposedly have no gluten in them because they're typically milled, meaning when, they, when they're processed. They're processed at plants that are already milling wheat that have gluten in them. So you get a little dusting that is not good. So you have to be very careful about what you pick out. If you're buying things at the grocery store, Whole Foods, make sure it says gluten-free. Uh, rice is a very good, very good grain to eat if, if you're going that route because it's typically non-inflammatory. There is rice, uh, all kinds of rice products. Rice spaghetti. Anyone ever had that? Rice crackers, rice cakes. So impaired digestion of proteins ends up in the blood stimulating inflammatory immune response. So we have antibodies in the body. What is rheumatoid arthritis? It's an antibody that attacks the body. All these autoimmune diseases. Antibodies that we produce because of things like grains and dairy products that we don't digest very well. They attack us. That's crazy, isn't it? We're creating an internal milieu in our body that attacks us. How many people in this room have pain in their body? Almost everybody. Usually in a typical crowd, we'll think that there's about, because they say the study shows about 30% of Americans that have pain in their body. Well, when I ask, and I just asked here, I've seen most people have pain. We like to clean all that stuff out. We recently have been starting to use an anti-candida program. You know, guys all know what candida is or candida. Common. You know, we go to the doctors, the, the West Side doctors, alternative doctors, and they, they tell everybody you've got candida. Is it true? I think it is true. It's not that I treat everyone for it. I wait to see those people that have that grungy look to them, that have a lot of symptoms. And there's a lot of us sitting in this room that have that. I know that without asking, because it's common. And when we can clean up the gut, we tend to clean up the whole system, everything up to the joints. Antioxidants, very, very important. We do a test in the office, it's a blood test. We take a couple of vials of blood, it's called SpectraCell, and it checks for antioxidant level. It checks for, are you deficient in vitamins, minerals, and amino acids? Those four things. There's no one that I've ever tested that had a high enough antioxidant level, except me. Now, why is that? I take good care of myself, and I take antioxidants. I always have. I exercise as much as I can. And uh, most people that come and I see an antioxidant level in the, maybe like the 35th percentile. You take care of yourself overnight, you get it up in the 80s or 90s. What does that mean? It means your immune system is much more efficient in taking care of all these other things that bother you, keep you healthier. We want to stay away from high fried food, oxidized, oxidized fats, fish oil is oxidized. Watch out, I know everyone likes to eat fish oil. Make sure it's a great brand that you use and make sure it's fairly fresh. Because oils get rancid. You don't want putting rancid things in your body, it's gonna do the reverse of what you want it to. 
we get a lot of oxidation from high iron, from red meat. And for men, we have that more than women or non-menstruating women also have the same problem with the iron buildup. Menstruating women are usually losing enough blood each month, so their iron levels are fairly low. But you have to check the blood and make sure where a person is at with that. So we call low, we call low antioxidant protection of the body oxidative stress. A lot of it's due to toxic chemicals entering the body from the air, pollution, water, food additives, colorants, pesticides, preservatives, dental amalgams. Anyone in this room had their their silver pulled out, their mercury pulled out? Okay. Not a whole lot, but a, you know, six or seven. I've had it done. Um, smoking, grilled foods, which, you know, those are pretty good and hard to stay away from, but they do cause problems. They are carcinogens in the gut also. Even lotions. We find a lot of toxins and lotions we put on our skin, and guess what happens? Anyone use bioidentical hormones, skin creams for that? Well, it gets absorbed transdermally. When you're doing any kind of a lotion, what's in it gets transdermally absorbed in the body fairly quickly. Even our clothing carries things. I never put on a new shirt without washing it. Do you know what's in a new shirt, new pair of pants? Formaldehyde. That's what they do to bodies when they're dead. <laughs> Why do they do it? Because they don't want bugs eating up the clothes before you get them. Always wash your clothes before you put them on. So big toxins, mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic, car exhaust, industrial chemicals, cosmetics, hair products, microwaving. Don't ever do it if you've got plastic in there. Now, there's been studies I've seen where people actually take water and they will microwave it versus water they don't. They put it on plants. Guess which plants die right away? <laughs> the microwave water. I mean, I don't, microwaving does a lot of things we don't know about. But if you have plastic and you put it in your microwave, it actually bleeds into the food and you end up with dioxins, which are terrible for the body. They hit the estrogen receptors. They make little girls get their periods very young. They make little girls get uh, BO, body odor. We see it in five-year-olds now. We see the periods, girls getting their periods when they're 10 or 11 now. Used to be 12, 13, 14. So it's getting, it's getting lower. Low cortisol. Cortisol is a very, very important hormone. How many people in here have had their cortisol checked? Not too many. I see the people in my office have, and then I don't know you, but uh, some other smart doctor did. Uh, cortisol is sort of the basic bottom level of where your energy is at. Now, I know there were some TV ads saying, keep your cortisol low because it causes belly fat. Yeah, if it's excessive, but in LA, most of us don't have very much cortisol. Why is that? The adrenal glands that produce it are in fatigue. They've burned out. We've already gone through our stressful times. Everything's expensive in L.A. It's a fast-moving pace. We burn out young in L.A. So typically I'll find people who come in and their main complaint is fatigue, even though they have other things. They have pain. But the main thing that really bothers them is fatigue. Leads to depression, leads to pain. We check the adrenal glands. We find that most people are flatlined already. We occasionally get people on the very high end, stressful careers. Where are they going to be in about a month or two or in a year? Boom. Adrenal glands will just give out. So always get your cortisol checked if you have any of these kind of syndromes with fatigue, you know, the fibromyalgia, the chronic fatigues, just grunginess, frequent colds, all of those things. Adrenal burnout, history of excess and continuous stress, low level of precursors from which the body makes cortisol. Pregnenolone, it's a hormone for the brain, but we call it the mother of all the hormones. It's right after cholesterol. Anyone here take a statin drug to lower their cholesterol? One two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a killer drug. Most people do not need to have their cholesterol lowered. Doctors are giving it out like candy now. It's the number one selling drug in the universe. And red yeast rice. Anyone here take red yeast rice? One, two, three. It's natural, right? It's a statin drug. There's better ways to lower your cholesterol if, in fact, it's really high. I don't find that people really have high cholesterol. I find that they have bad nutrition. That raises up their cholesterol. Okay? Not to danger levels. Most people don't have danger levels. And is cholesterol the best marker for heart disease? No. That's old. The, that's what the cardiologists use. That's old. We look at other things. Neurotransmitters. If you don't have good neurotransmitters being rejuvenated every night in deep REM sleep and deep uh, delta sleep, 
you're going to feel a lot of pain. There's a, there's a neurotransmitter called substance P. If you don't sleep one night, how do you feel the next day? 